Okay, my name is Marilyn, and I am a survival of neural weapons, gang stalking, direct energy weapons, and much worse. So I'm going to talk about rape and remote neural monitoring. And this is for the women and the men who are raped remotely by other people that they cannot see. And we have to express this truth. I'm not trying to trigger you. I want us to expose it so we can stop it. So what I did to try to figure out how to get the language about this, I googled, um, actually I'm using DuckDuckGo, um, women who abuse other women. And basically what's come up is lesbian relationships. Uh, which would make sense because we're talking about women who are lesbians that are gang stalkers because I've been gang stalked by women um, f for 20 years and sexually assaulted remotely, repeatedly, and they can possibly do it to me. Okay, so they talk about lesbian partner violence on the internet, uh, and also about women who are sexually abused by Catholic nuns, that this is a problem in the Catholic Church, the predator nun, um, molesting uh, young girls and other women, okay? Um, now this is a quote from Slate.com. Um, The article, I'm not going to name it, but I'm just going to look at the text. I might put it in the link. But this is an interesting quote. So this woman gives a testimony of being abused um, by another female. And uh, in one of the paragraphs it says, This could be because mainstream LGBTQ organizations have been so focused on marriage equality for the last decade or more this pursuit has given advocates little incentive to address the sort of ugly problems that could play into the hands of conservative anti-gay activists and threaten the aura of middle class respectability that they've worked so hard to present to the public. And so although sexual assault might be widespread and ongoing problem in the lesbian community, few people seem to be working to stop it or even attempting to learn more about it. The best estimate is based on a study conducted in San Francisco in 2005, which found that one third of lesbians reported having been sexually assaulted by other women and roughly confirmed the work of other researchers in the late 80s and early 90s. Since then, research seems to have dwindled. There hasn't been a national study of lesbian sexual abuse. No one has attempted to find out what sort of woman be becomes rapist, whether female rapists tend to be serial offenders or whether their motivations match those of male offenders. Um, in the meantime, lesbians have continued to be abused sexually uh, with very few resources available for support or healing. Now, this has everything to do with women that are gang shoppers and are raping us remotely. I've been sexually assaulted by uh, it's an ongoing gang rape by four women, and these are their names. Uh, Natasha Williams, Keisha Jones, Michelle Miller, and a white female Lori. I'm not even sure that is her first name. The white female Lori is a white supremacist that believes that black women should be submissive to her remotely. She has remote sexual activity with hundreds of people, and um, she has herpes. She's a psychopathic abuser of women and men, in particular black people. Uh, she was quoted earlier before I recorded this that her dream is to remotely rape white women and uh, white women, and she's a white woman. Um, I've um, been so traumatized by it, just the women abusing me that um, I've, I've, I mean, not only have I been crying. Uh, you know, I've called the police, okay? 
I've called the police and I've reported this crime. And whether they believe me or not, I'm still going to report it. I'm going to keep reporting it. Okay, so... We have to expose the lesbian that's a terrorist and gang stalking. Um, where they're finding these women, they're probably monitoring them years in advance and then recruiting them to be rapists and gang stalkers. Uh, so it, it, the same rule applies to targeted individuals. You're, you're watched for so long before you realize it and you're a young person at this point. You're probably in grade school. Um, and they're watching you grow up. And they slowly, as you become a teenager and a young adult, they will start messing with your life and trying to do mind control and torture. And there's millions of us globally going through this. How are we going to help each other as women who are victims of uh, sexual assault remotely by other women. What kind of language can we use from the, um, the people that are talking about intersectional relationships with other people who have like, these, these issues? So intersectional politics. Um, I'm going to use Google. Google's a little bit smarter. Well, it's, it's accumulated more data from the planet. Um, intersection. Apparently, I can't look at that right now. Okay, so, um, you know, how to stop these women from sexually assaulting us remotely while millions of people don't know about uh, this crime and lots of people don't believe us. Um, This is a sentence I'm going to try to use because I think the language that we're going to have to learn to talk about sexual assault by other women as a TI. Um, maintaining uh, a survival strategy uh, and fearing extreme violence at the hands of racist whites and psychopathic others and people in our same ethnicity damaging us emotionally and destroying our ability to have intimate bonds with the rest of the culture, friends and family. Um, that we are actually vulnerable because of this technology and we're missing out on an emotional connection with our real partners because we are constantly being gang raped remotely and um, this goes on for years. And for the men that are being sexually assaulted in, in remote neural monitoring. I feel for you and I hope that you can have um, the strength to come forward and tell your story about this. And don't worry about other TIs being triggered. We need to be tough and we need to talk about this because this is what's happening to us. All TIs are being sexually assaulted remotely. Okay? All of us. So let's expose these people and put them in prison. Let's get laws passed. Thank you for listening.